It's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm taking your questions. I'm offering my expertise here free, of course, to help you make money when you're thrift store shopping, when you're downsizing, maybe you're moving, or if you're cleaning out an estate. Uh, we're going to answer those questions like, is it valuable? And any other questions that you want to ask me, I will answer them too. Um, remember, many of my questions have been answered in other videos. So you can use the channel. We have a search, of course, to find those free answers. Um, you just go to the search. It's the little magnifying glass and you type in what you want. Um, so when I was thrift store shopping, had some cool stuff happen. Do you know what's special about this plate that I found at the Goodwill thrift shop? Do you know why I'm holding it and why it's special? And then, you know, I get a lot of complaints. Are you a complainer? I get a lot of complaints like this about pieces like this. And do you know a good online platform to resell this, this particular piece? I do. Um, and then when I was thrift store shopping, is this a real one or is this a fake handbag? For those of you who don't want to see how to make money and don't have time when you're thrifting and reselling, you don't have time, you don't care to listen to me, you can go right ahead. You can kind of, you know, just skip to the end and I'll reveal what the deal is on those three objects and more. I'm taking your questions about what's valuable. Susan, with the revol thank you very much for your super sticker and your super chat. I appreciate it. With the Revolutionary War anniversary coming up and buying buying now, are the items marked 1776 to 1976 part of what to collect, or is it just George, Martha, I guess you're talking about the Washingtons, and items referring to the Revolutionary War directly, not the centennial? No. Revolutionary War is good. Martha's good. George is good. Anything that has to do with, of course, the Revolutionary War period and the founding of our country, 1776, and the centennials because the centennials are also having a anniversary as well. So it's going to be big American stuff that's going to be, um, of course, the, the collectible and the valuable stuff of the future that's coming up. You know, I always say collect what's coming. So yes, good question. That helps everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Susan. I'm glad you're learning so much. There's a lot to learn on the channel and on the drlaurieve.com website. There's all kinds of information there too. You can just search that. Uh, to find out what's what. Hello to all of you. I love to know where you're all watching from. And I appreciate you watching the videos and sharing the videos. A lot of you are new to the channel. You said, I didn't know you do classes, Dr. Lori. I didn't know I could have a one-on-one -on -one -on -one video call with you. Yes, you can. I'd love to see you all on the website. Um, let's see. Did Kevin, uh, Kevin, I still have a 1976 Gibson Les Paul custom guitar. I'd love to have you appraised. Well, what are you waiting for, Kevin? <laughs> you know, why don't you uh, send me a picture to drlaurieb.com. There's a little icon right there on the homepage. It's a little camera. Click the click, click it, and then send a photo, and you could get a report. Um, you have to submit some photos, and you have to fill out that form because I need dimensions and some other information, and of course, how to get back in touch with you. So that's what the form is for. Um, but that's an easy thing that you can definitely do. Remember, um, the objects that are submitted, I look at. With these two big brown eyes, I look at them, and I'll respond to you accordingly. I have a porcelain china cup, but the bottom marking is in Chinese, okay? Well, what does this mean as far as the date goes? Okay, so what you want to know is, well, maybe this is not what you're asking, but I think what you're asking is, when do they start marking these pieces in this particular way? Does that help you with respect to the date? It depends on the actual object. So. They can be modern. What modern means most of the time is after 1875, and they can be much, much earlier than that. But typically, if you see a marking, depending on what kind of marking it is. So I'd have to see a picture of the marking to be able to give you more information. Um, but I think what you're trying to figure out is about the dates. Um, let's see. I was wondering what you think of Hull Pottery. I like Hull Pottery, great American pottery. You've got a bunch of little red riding hoods. Little Red Riding Hood by Hull was very popular. The cookie jar was very popular, really expensive for a long time, the cookie jar. And then also there was um, there was the little creamer and the little planter and, and uh, sugar and creamer and salt and pepper shakers and the whole thing. But the cookie jar, Little Red Riding Hood, and there was more than one pattern. It was all the same form, Little Red Riding Hood, but different patterns. I like Hull pottery. 
And American pottery in general usually holds its value very well in the market. So that's what we typically see. That's what we typically see. And what's even more exciting is on the, on the channel now with our videos, you can go shopping. You can go shopping on my channel on the videos. Check out the tagged products that I've included on the videos, on the videos, new ones, and of course, ones that are up on the channel already. So go back and watch those old videos so you can do some more shopping with me. I suggest those products that I think you might like related to, of course, the video. So check it out. We're taking questions. Thanks for keep them coming. Uh, why would people complain when we weren't able to watch you do the most fun thing ever and tell us great info of your channel? Thank you, Heidi. I don't know why they complain. I don't know what their problem is. I think they should all just realize what I'm trying to do here. You know, Fresno, Fresno's fun. I've been there. Um, I remember Fresno very well. The Tonto Basin, Arizona. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I could use some of that. And Columbus, Columbus. Well, I've got a little go blue going here for Columbus, but we still like our friends in Ohio. <laughs> Thank you for being with me. I appreciate all of you being with me. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot, of course, on the website and a lot, of course, here on the channel. And the best part about the channel is all of you. <laughs> so silver teapot with eight hallmarks stamped on the bottom and a number, okay, has a long horn with a flag. The magnet doesn't stick to it. It has a scallop bottom with a black handle. How to identify real silver? Huh. Well, I think there's silver marks. There is definitely a web page and more than one on silver marks and how to identify them. There's definitely videos on how to identify real silver. There's definitely a video also. So if you go to the channel, you're here on the channel, there's a, usually on your phone, there's the icon of the magnifying glass at the top, go in there and put in silver or identify silver marks, you know, and it's going to come up. The videos from me are going to come up that in fact relate to that. Remember, there's all different types of marks on different types of silver. So, and you may not have silver, you may not have sterling, you may have a piece that is actually plated and they could have hallmarks too. They're called pseudo hallmarks. And they're hallmarks that, in fact, are trying to make you believe that you've got something better than what you've got. Um, but you can do it that way, too. But searching the channel is the way to go. A lot of these questions, I'm happy to tell you there are videos on these, on these particular topics. Kentucky, my old Kentucky home. There we go. <laughs> Kentucky is in the house as well. Thanks so much for viewing, for sharing, and for watching. Have a lot of fun with the thrift store videos. I'm enjoying doing them. I know you guys are enjoying watching them. And now more and more, a lot of information about shopping and where to resell and such. Um, my classes, of course, my selling classes are very popular with respect to reselling. Here's Jason. Can a piece of furniture made in the 1950s that is a duplicate by a different company of a design originating in the 1920s? Okay, so I've got a 1950s firm that's making a piece of furniture that was first introduced in the 20s, still being made by the original company, have significant value. Can the actual reproductions have significant value? Usually not as much value as the original, right? But it can have value. So what's significant value? This depends on what you feel is significant value. Like what I would think is valuable may not be what Oprah thinks is valuable, right? <laughs> so everybody has a different version of what's valuable. But yes, the reproduction or the basically the the piece that is done by that 1950s company can be valuable usually not as valuable as the original you always want the real thing you know like me i'm the real thing the people try to copy me not the real thing so yeah you want that um make sure it's in good condition and make sure that it's made well um finding a lot of the times the reason why they do that is because finding the original ones becomes difficult right? Or impossible. So they start to go, hey, this was a popular thing. We're going to make it again. So good question. Thanks, Jason. I recently acquired about 100 German pink pig fairings. What do you think will be the best time to start selling them? I would say you probably should sell them toward the end of the decade. I would hold on to them for a while. Um, and the reason behind that is you want to make sure that the market is ready for those particular pieces. So I would hold on to those for a while. The other thing I want to see is usually in a presidential election year, 2024 presidential election year uh, in the United States, you typically will see a spike 
in, of course, the economy. So you want to make sure that the economic profile of the market is good enough for them. But good question. Good question. So think about that before you actually remarket them. So that's a good one, too. That's a good one. Um, are telephone tables worth anything? My Aunt Dorothy had a gossip table, I'll tell you. And it was really funny because we used to all love to, all myself and my sisters, my cousins, everybody, we used to love to just sit at that little table and look at the telephone book. Remember the telephone book, the big fat telephone book? I'm really dating myself now. Um, the, the gossip table or telephone tables, you would sit there, it would be sometimes in a little shelf, like a little drawer for the telephone book, and then a place for the telephone, the telephone that was the desk style with the big handle, right? not the one that went on the, uh, on the wall. And basically that's it. I was talking to a, um, you know, a 20 something, if he was 22, I'd be surprised at one of my public events. And I asked, I said, I said have you ever seen a rotary phone? Do you know how to work a rotary phone? And he just kind of looked at me and he's like, no. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, telephone tables are popular. A lot of people like them for the vintage look. Oftentimes they're one seat with the little place for the, tel for the telephone book and the telephone itself. And uh, usually, you know, it would be in the kitchen right near the phone. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I, I got some sweaters out, right? I decided to get some sweaters out, a uh, little bit of my ski bunny outfits, right? I can't ski. I can't. I would kill myself. I'd break both knees. Forget it. Chris, it's nice to see you. And I want to thank all of you for super chats and super stickers. It helps support the channel. It helps me, of course, with respect to making more videos that will help you to make money when you're thrifting, as well as learning about art, antiques, and collectibles. And it also supports my staff, because this would not happen if my staff was not doing what they do. And they run as fast as I do. So they're very, very good. Thank you for supporting them with Super Chats. Johnson Brothers platters have either a red or green paint dash on the back. Is this a year indication? There are different reasons why they would have these kinds of marks. Sometimes the marks have to do with, of course, uh, a notation or information to the production facility. Um, sometimes it's a distributor's mark. It doesn't typically have to do with date. So be aware of that. The dates have to do with the stamp and also the type of stamp. Um, there's a reason why they're, that certain companies will change their stamp or their back stamp or their mark every once in a while. That's an important part of the um, of the element as well. Johnson Brothers is a long-standing English ceramic company, so you're going to see a lot of changes going through. How should I show potential buyers tiner chips on China or crystal? Show in the picture mentioned in the description. Do both. Show a picture, make a detail, and say it in the description. Be, of course, as be as forthcoming as you can. Tell them because you don't want to have trouble on the other side. Let them know, hey, there's a chip here. We are all aware of it. Excuse me. We're all aware of it, and this is what it is. So be aware of that. Yes, but I think be overzealous with that. I always tell the folks in the classes, you know, we learn a lot from the other during my selling classes. And, you know, I always say, you know, you want to make sure you take those sharp pictures. Pictures are going to be very important if you're trying to sell anything. Make sure they're good. Not just a little bit good. They need to be very good. Um, I love Ironstone. I love Ironstone, too. I think it's pretty. But try to find it in the best condition possible because I intend to use it. Okay. Why the craze for crazing? A lot of people, Carolyn, like, Carolyn, like crazing. They think it looks antique. They think it looks great. Crazing is not what you want. <laughs> you know, I think these people are not really using it the way you intend to use it. I think they're just displaying it. And they like that old time sort of antique look. The other thing is now that you have these folks who are, you know, antiquing tables, making them crack, right, with that with that um, application of a certain stain and an antiquing um, polyurethane, I would say that's probably why people like the crazing. But if you're going to use it, you don't want it crazed. So that's important. You want to make sure that nothing leaches from it. And when the glaze starts to crack like that, that could be another problem. So be aware of that. If you intend to use it, I think that's great. Pastor, how are you? It's nice to see you. Uh, of course, all wonderful joy back to you too. It's nice to see you. Thank you very much for your support. Um, sell Star Tech Collectors will hold them for a while. Well, I like to sell anything that has to do with big TV shows, big movies, big celebrity stuff. When another particular Star Trek movie is on the horizon, that's when I like to sell it. I like to sell it when everybody's thinking about it. You know, when everybody this summer was selling all the Barbie stuff, right? 
because why? They're the big Barbie movie. So yeah, I would like you to wait until you have a big, you know, another big movie coming forward for Star Trek. Thank you very much for the super chat and the super stickers. They all help and they help a lot and they're very necessary to keep us going. So I appreciate that. Um, your questions, is it valuable, right? Brandon, Brandon, you are just terrific. Oh, thank you so much. You're wonderful. Thank you. You're very nice. I've got some red on today. So we've got to, got to lighten up the place a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of you, of course, I recognize from, of course, the comments. I'm so happy that you're enjoying the channel, that you're watching, that you're learning, that you're sharing it with friends. That's great too. Oh, here's a question. Terry Lynn, you said that provenance on a piece of art makes it more valuable. I have said that. That is true. Everybody who knows about art would say that. Okay. Does this include antique photo on art on wall with photo of the artist? Mention of artist in original newspapers. Okay. So the artist is part of the provenance, but not the only aspect of the provenance, right? You want to know the artist painted it and then it was bought by this person. Then it was bought by that person or it was handed down to his grandson or whatever it is. So tracking it is important. This information where you have old photos of the artist with the actual painting, yes, will increase value. It's a good thing. Uh, provenance comes from the French to prove it, that idea of proving the pieces. Thank you very much for your super chats and super stickers. I'll thank all of you at the end. I'm glad you love this channel. If you love it, show it. What does that mean? Watch it, share it, super chat, super stickers. Do what I say so you can succeed. You know, I'm trying to help you with all of this. Uh, and remember to search the channel for the free answers. Um, the free answers are right there as you search um, the channel. It's really easy. Same thing with the website. A lot of you are like, I didn't even know she had a website. I have a, a very long standing website that's been popular and helpful to people for a long time. A lot of information under the research tab on my website. Hi, Kim. I have a Mont Blanc leather wallet with a notepad inside made as a corporate gift. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> when I worked in corporations, I never got stuff like that. <laughs> it has an embossed corporate image inside. Uh, okay. Since it's a corporate gift, does that lower the value? Well, it depends on the corporation. Okay. So if you have something from like a major corporation like Ford Motor Company or IBM or, you know, Apple or whomever it might be, right, then you have two categories for your collectible. You not only have the Mont Blanc, the leather sort of writing instruments known for those, but you also would have whatever the company is. So actually where people will say, oh, that's not worth anything because it was a corporate gift. If the company is well recognized, people collect certain corporations, so objects of certain corporations, so that could increase the value too. Yeah. So, you know, you everybody's ready to go, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's bad. But that's not always the case. Can you appraise the art provenance in the email or is a video better? It depends on the object. Send me a photo. Send me a photo. I'll give you directions on what to do. Can I appraise it? Yes. <laughs> so let's see what you've got. <laughs> see what you've got. So a lot going on. When are you coming back to Minnesota to, sh to shop at our thrift stores? A lot of fun. I've been shop. I, as you know, I travel all over and I thrift store shop. I don't just stay in one area. So you keep seeing the same videos from people who are just in the same area. I go all over. I mean, that's what's unusual and unique about our thrifting videos. But there's a lot to see. I hope to get back to Minnesota. I, I might wait till the spring, I got to say. <laughs> But no, I'll be back in Minnesota, certainly. Um, I'll be in many different places. You can always check my event schedule at drlaurieV.com under events. A lot of you are saying, I want to see you in person, Dr. Lori. You can do that. Check the event schedule. It's at drlaurieV.com. And everything is published there. Also, other times when I'm on television, I'm making appearances on all these different shows. So you want to see that too. Um, thank you for watching me online. Channel two with Heather is so informative. Karen, uh, what Karen's referring to, for those of you who are not with CBS3, KDKA in Pittsburgh, um, is my regular weekly What's It Worth with Dr. Lori's segment, which takes place on CBS. So, yep, that's great. We have a good time there. Um, wonderful hosts and a terrific community there, just like the terrific community here. I love the community in our classes too. My um, appraisal classes where people can get an object appraised um, are also open. Of course, people do that. And people like, of course, that I, I love to hear it. You know, we're just starting in. We do it on, I do it on Zoom and people are like, oh, Sue's here. Oh, Pat's here. Oh, you know, it's nice that you're all getting to know each other um, here on the channel and also in the classes. So that's fun. But yeah, I have a great time doing that. That's um, that's our regular weekly. That's one of them that I do. 
Um, that one's for CBS. Terrific. Yeah, a lot of fun. So we're learning so much. We've got so much. Hi from Orlando. Orlando must be warm, right? Do numbered and signed prints by Maurice Boitel have a good resale value? Numbered prints and signed prints will. Boitel's pieces will have a good value. They got to be in good condition. I want you to look for any kinds of staining that might be water damage. Got to look into where has it been before. And if it's framed, try to keep it in the frame. Frames will protect the prints. So think about that. Yep. I hope it's sunny for you there. It's going to get cold, I think. <laughs> Seeming like it's cold. Oh, so yeah. So is it valuable? What questions do you have for me? Personal, professional, otherwise, I'll answer them. What do you want to know? Lainey, I have an original painting by Henry John Sylvester. Oh, okay. Standard. Okay. But I can't find any info on his art. Do you think this would have any value. It's very old. It has nails and rope to hang by. I don't like rope. Rope, you know, rope can give way. But yes, I definitely can help you to identify, help you find some information on the artist. And also, of course, uh, look at the piece for you if you want to send me a picture. Um, relatively well-known artist. I don't know why you're having trouble. And maybe it's just, um, you know, maybe it's just you're searching, but I can help you. What's your favorite trending unknown valuable thing? My favorite trending unknown <laughs> valuable thing. Wait a minute. If it's trending and it's unknown, that's kind of hard to do, right? <laughs> All right. Well, my favorite unknown valuable thing that people don't realize, let's, let's do this way. Uh, what do people not realize is valuable? Well, my favorite thing that I think people don't realize are valuable is costume jewelry. I see a lot of great costume jewelry going really too low. I think they're doing that too low. And I see a lot of things in thrift stores, which I point out to you, and I leave them there for you, right? When I'm in the thrift store and I'm shopping for the, doing the videos for you. A lot of things in those thrift stores are valuable too that I think people are passing by. Some great pieces. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why I'm trying to highlight all of these for you. So, um, but yeah. So I would say costume jewelry. What else is there? I'm trying to think. Um, Toys, some toys, but you got to get the right toy, right? The other thing is, I think a lot of people uh, don't realize how much money is in their own closets, right? Um, purses, accessories, handbags, scarves, shoes, sneakers. Oh my goodness, sneakers. I love sneakers personally. <laughs> sneakers. Um, what do they call them? Uh, what did my friends at Michigan call them? I uh, When I went to school in Ann Arbor, my friends who lived in the Midwest called them run tennis shoes. That's what they called them. I couldn't think of it. I used to call them sneakers. They thought I was crazy. Oh, Pamela, sorry. Uh, maybe it's Pamela. That's pretty. I don't know. Uh, Paco Rabanne, metal bad, bought it at a thrift store 22 years ago. What's it worth? Okay. Uh, need to see it. <laughs> Probably has value. Why? Good designer name. Uh, you bought it 22 years ago, which means it probably was old then, right? If it was in a thrift store, usually I would say that. Yep. I would, I would think about that. So send me a picture. It's the easiest thing. Thanks very much, Kim. I appreciate all of your support for all of you who are lending their support. Um, I just happened to look up when I saw Kim's. So come to Tucson, Carol, let me tell you, twist my arm. I'll come to Tucson. I've been to Tucson many times. Great place. Lovely people. It's a lot of fun. I do remember I was in Tucson, I think it was October and it was 104 or 102. I remember looking at the dashboard in the rental car thinking 102, really? It's October. But boy, what a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, Scottsdale, I've done a lot of work, appraisal work in Scottsdale as well, and was able to visit, visit Taliesin, of course, um, Frank Lloyd Wright's atelier. So that was fun. Thank you for the invitation. You guys are sweet about that. I get invitations all over. Come and stay with us. We'll make you dinner. We'll, <laughs> we'll put you up, whatever it is. So thank you very much for all of your support. And I appreciate it. And we need it. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. We need help. We always need help. We need help for you to watch so you can learn more. We need help for you to, of course, succeed. That's what I want to see you do. And I'm hearing those stories. Keep those stories coming. When you go, go, Dr. Laura, you appraise this for me, and I was able to sell it. I followed your directions. I had a video call with you one-on-one. -on -one. You told me what to do in the steps, or I took the classes, the four-part, you know, selling class, and I did great. And a lot of a lot of folks are taking these classes over because they actually um 
they actually were saying, geez, you know, I learned more the second time around too, because different people in the class, Dr. Lori answers different questions. It's a lot of fun. Um, thank you very much. It is fun. It's fun for me to have the one-on-one -on -one with all of you guys too. The video calls can be booked right through drlorieb.com. It's easy. So I might've missed a question there. Sorry. I was talking a mile a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> so fun to be back with you. I still call him tennis shoes. Pepsi is pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pepsi, yeah, pop. Because um, there was someone from Buffalo, New York, and he called it pop, one of my friends. And then my Michigan friends called it pop. And I was like, what is pop? Why, why, are, why aren't we drinking soda? <laughs> you know, so it was difficult to be a New Englander in Ann Arbor, let me tell you. <laughs> what are your thoughts on selling holiday Barbies? The market seems oversaturated. Well, you know, the market's oversaturated because for everybody who didn't know what to get grandma or Aunt Susie or their daughter, every guy got a holiday Barbie for these people. So there it is. I've been trying to sell them for over a year. Okay, here's some of the things that you might be doing. First of all, if there's an oversaturated market, you don't want to jump in it, right? Don't get involved in the oversaturated market. You might have to just hold. The other thing is, if you're trying to sell them for over a year, you were selling them too early. They sh you should have started selling them about November 1st until the end of the year because they're holiday, right? So you have to connect to them that way. Yes, there are a lot of them in the market. They made a lot of them and they did that purposefully. So I think next holiday season right now, you know, next holiday season when it comes around, you got to start it up again, right? But again, usually about, I'd say about a month and a half, like six weeks before the actual holiday starts. But yes, there's a lot of Barbies out there. But, you know, Barbies has a long-standing um, collecting interest. What is the best way to clean vintage costume jewelry? This is a good question. Let me tell you a couple of things. Vintage costume jewelry can be made of many different materials. Sometimes it's paste. Sometimes it's an overlay. Sometimes it's enamel. Sometimes it's gold tone metal and not real, not actual real precious metal. So you have these kind of problems. So for me to say, clean it this way, clean it with this, clean it with that would not be prudent. You know why? It depends on which object you have and what materials that object is made of. Because sometimes you cleaning it, you could ruin the whole thing. So be a little more specific and I'll be able to help you with that. But again, you just want to be careful how you do it. And don't just follow anybody online or on YouTube saying, I, could, I clean it like this. I do that. You don't know if their information will be accurate to your object. So, you know, be careful about that. Don't be overzealous um, cleaning either. So I have a daddy long legs doll collection worth anything. Oh boy, my gosh, daddy long legs doll. Um, I think any collection, of course, will be valuable. Now, is this going to be get you the retirement hut in Fiji? I doubt it. But again, um, certain people do still like these pieces as nostalgia. So they will pay for them, but it won't be, it won't be again, big numbers. We're not going to be talking into the millions for your daddy long legs doll collection. <laughs> but dolls do have a, a good collecting circle, though. The people who collect dolls are very motivated and they're very dedicated. So sometimes these pieces do sell pretty well, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on that. Make sure you put something into your 401k or your IRA or whatever you do. <laughs> I picked up a very large, heavy duty Bradley and Hubbard parlor hanging lamp that was electrified. Yes, just because a 19th century lamp is electrified uh, does not mean that the value is diminished. Okay. A lot of people want to display these pieces and use these pieces. So having them electrified is really a lot easier than actually getting, you know, lighting the wick every time. So yes, it does still hold value. Um, actually, some people prefer them. Uh, it will depend on the actual Bradley and Hubbard um, lamp itself. So out, out of, of course, New England, uh, a very well-known 19th century firm. They made a lot of different stuff, Bradley and Hubbard. So, yep. Good question. Helpful question too. So thank you all for watching and thank you, of course, for your super chats and super stickers. I'm still answering questions. Is it valuable? What do you want to know from me? What do you want to know? So how do I find out the value of an autograph book? Hand pink waving. Hand pink waving. I don't know what that means, but I can tell you the value of an autograph book. It's going to depend on whether or not it's printed autographs. And yes, there were actual printed autograph books that were sold in the 1800s, even as far back as the 1800s. 
Little Creek, California. Thank you very much. Um, so basically, yeah, I can appraise that. Uh, sometimes they're going to have individual autographs page by page. That was really a thing to do um, in the 19th and even 20th century. You've mentioned the first dibs is overpriced. No, I mentioned that first dibs has pieces that are listed that are listed for higher prices than the market may bear. It depends on the pieces. What do you think about selling on that site? Can you get higher prices than eBay, for example? It depends on the object. And it depends on how good your listing is, which is what I teach people in my selling classes. So I don't believe that you're just going to go to one site and it's going to be, oh, there's magic at that site. It depends on how you list. It depends on what you're listing as well. And I can help with which platforms are the best. Yep. Crazy question. Are old knitting needles or hero crochet hooks from the 40s worth anything? Yes, they are. Sewing implements, crochet implements, knitting implements, uh, those, those, um, uh, those circles you know, that the embroidery would sit on, those hoops. All this stuff is desirable. People love it. Love it. And they pay a lot for it. So don't let people tell you that it's not desirable. And yes, crochet hooks are popular and valuable as well. And don't do it all a big, huge bunch. This is what everybody's looking for. You know, you sell it in a big, huge lot. Oh, I just want to get rid of all of that stuff. So go easy because that could be pretty valuable. There is someone in my area selling those angel lamps that have the oil fountain. Looks to be in good shape. It works. She wants $500. Your thoughts? Need to see it. I think $500 is probably high if what I'm thinking of is what you're describing. But you know what, Sue? be a good idea for you to send a picture. It's easy enough to do. A lot of people do that on my video calls. Dr. Laura, I want you to look at this auction for me and tell me if this is a good deal or if that is a good deal. I do that a lot on my video calls. So... People will book a video call with me and they'll go from that. Oh, yeah, we're looking into the cruise, actually. We'll be looking into the cruise for 2024. And you want to cruise with me? You want to shop with me? Well, I need to hear it. I need to hear it in the comments. I want to go shopping with Dr. Lori. Yes, I want to spend a day doing that. Oh, I want to go on the cruise. Where should we go? When should we go? I want to hear it. If I don't hear from you in the comments, you know, I won't know that you want to do these things. So, and all of you can do that. Did Alexander Calder sign all of his jewelry? No, he did not sign some, but not all. Did you watch my video about Alexander Calder jewelry? It was in a real bargains video. I've done a couple videos and I have a website on it, a webpage on it too. Come on, you got to use the search feature, people. <laughs> Everything's is value if you have an interested party. Eh, yeah, but you can create the interested party. I can teach you how to find that person. I can show you how that person actually will show up, all right? How do you find that person? How do you attract them? How do you get the algorithm? How do you get the actual computer, the listing to pop up to the top again? How do you do it? So that's basically what we're doing. Oh, what happened? We lost an O. <laughs> I have my great grandfather's straight razor. Any value other than it's his? Well, it's a sentimental thing. A lot of people had straight razors, right? So typically a straight razor will sell between $1 and $3 if it's a straight late razor from the early 1900s. So Again, not going to beat the bank, but our hat pins and the vase they fit in worth money. Yes. Yep. People collect hat pins and they collect what's called a hat pin holder. It's You're describing it as a vase, but really it just has little holes in the top of a piece of ceramic. And yeah, people do collect those. That's right. Okay. Uh, I bought a painting of a little girl. Okay. It was painted by Helen Miller Haberstadt. I bought, I bought it for the frame. Any value? Yeah, but again, I need to see it. So again, you're saying, oh, this artist, that artist, this person, that person. Is the painting a good composition? Is the girl actually a good portrait likeness of this particular little girl? You know, these kinds of things would be what I would be looking for. You want to go on the cruise and shopping. Face fuchsia wide eyes. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Uh, it's nice to see you guys. I'd love to do all of those things with you. What happened to my O? Is my O over here? Where's the O? Oh, uh oh, I shouldn't be doing this. This is how I get into trouble. I'm going to get yelled at for doing this. I'm going to take this one because <laughs> my little thing is not, is not good. All of you Michiganders know what's going on. <laughs> I love Vera scarves. What, what is the market like? What should I look for? Well, I have to tell you that the market for scarves in general is very hot. I actually helped someone in one of my classes who had found a scarf at a thrift store. Oh, I'll let you go search it on the channel. Go search it on the channel, search for scarves or scarf, and you're going to find an unbelievable real bargain that came out of 
my appraisal class, my class with appraisal. So much fun. So much fun. The classes are good fun. Where are we cruising to? You tell me. Where do you want to go? I've been everywhere, so I'll go again. What do I care? I'll be happy to go again. Let, you want to go somewhere warm? You want to work somewhere cold? You want to go to the North Pole? I don't know. Where do we want to go? Want to go to the Caribbean, the South Pole? Where do we want to go? <laughs> uh, whatever you want to do. Is salt glaze pottery worth anything? It's hard to find in my area. Yeah, salt glaze pottery is very popular, and you can find it in most places. I don't see as much of it in the Southwest, but I do see it. I mean, it just depends on where you're looking. And I would search online. Just make sure that what you're seeing is you're seeing something of, again, good quality. Make sure you're looking at the quality when you're seeing this. How can you tell it's Waterford without the sticker? Waterford is marked usually with a white mark at the bottom of any piece of Waterford crystal, and it says the word Waterford. So unless that particular marking has gone away, you know, like, like basically over time it wore away, you can always find Waterford. The other way to find Waterford, and I taught you this in a video, is individual patterns. You got to be able to recognize the pattern, the design, the decoration. But you should be able to find it. Washboards, people like washboards, but you know, I haven't seen a washboard that's going to be more than, you know, 100 bucks maybe. I mean, washboards don't go high, high. So, and sometimes when you have the company name on the washboard, you can get a little bit more for them. So all this information is what I'm telling you for free here on the channel. What do you have to do? You have to watch. Right? You have to sit and watch. Are Royal Worcester China brooches valuable? Yeah, you know, Mary, it's nice to see you. Royal Worcester um, China, uh, bone China brooches, sometimes hand-painted, sometimes they're actually just pieces. So a lot of those China firms figured out that what they could do was they could have a whole nother line of products if they just took what they're making in the, you know, in the, in the dinnerware ver version and basically make it smaller. So yeah, people like Royal Worcester. It's a good name, Royal Dalton, Royal Worcester. Um, a lot of those, of course, British um, manufacturers, very popular. I'm sorry, I missed that question. Uh, Want to see me go to Murano and see, I would love to go to Murano and see the glass maker. I'd love to go shopping with you. The, the fact of being in Murano and seeing those furnaces, which have been burning since the 1200s, right? 1200 AD. And to be there is just beautiful. And uh, the little, the, the sleepy island of Burano is nearby where you could also stroll and shop, my favorite thing to do. Um, but Venice and its 117 beautiful islands uh, really are wonderful. Um, you know, the gondolas, uh, you know, I don't like to get, you know, these big thighs into a gondola, but I do it. <laughs> but I will say that uh, for the most part, really beautiful. And to see the Murano glass artisans do their stuff, you'll never forget it. Triple lifetime. We're going to have to go. We're going to have to go. <laughs> come and shop at the Chapter Store in Birdsville, Minnesota. Uh, we'll come to all of them. Will you please tell your favorite thrift stores to get in touch with us and invite me to come? Do you want me to come to your favorite thrift stores? Invite me to come. That's what you need to do. Tell them. Dr. Lori wants to come. So <clears throat> tell them. Get in touch. Put it on the comments right here on uh, YouTube, right here on the channel, and we'll go from there. It's great. That's what we'll do. Hummels. You know, people have poor Hummels. Everybody hates Hummels for some reason. Hummels have a very big and active collecting community. You people who are just going, eh, Hummels, they're not worth much. You know, a lot of people are still looking for Hummels. The new ones today, some people are still collecting them and giving them to grandma kind of thing. But I have to tell you that there are a lot of young people who are saying, my grandma had those. I would really like to have a Hummel. You'd be surprised. I see that more and more. And when I'm in thrift stores, who am I surrounded by when I'm doing the videos and shopping in thrift stores? Young people. Young people who are looking at vintage pieces like Hummels. So yes, and I gave you values on the Hummels and which ones to look for on the channel on a video. So if you want to go and look and just search the channel, you can do that. I think pool toys, I don't care who made them, but Fisher Price, sure. But the old ones from the 30s can be very valuable and they're always worth picking up. You'll notice I have some on the, on the table here too. Remember, it's free to search this channel. Thank you very much. My birthday is in January. That's right. And thank you for remembering. And any of you who, of course, watching and helping and super chats will make me have a great birthday. But mostly having you succeed will make me have a good birthday. If you want to go shopping, I want to hear about it. 
because we'll try to set something up. Do you know what's special about the plate I found? <laughs> Do you know what's special about the plate I found? Well, here's the plate. This is the next hot collectible that will spike in value in a few years. What is it? How do you find it? You could search the channel. How do you search the channel? Go to the little icon of the magnifying glass, the search icon. It's the same search icon you use on every other search channel, right? And go and put in Next Talk Collectible. And you know what's going to happen? The video when I post it that has the Next Talk Collectible in it will come up. So it's going to be easy for you to find what you need to find, right? And then, of course, you know, I get a lot of complaints, a lot of people complaining about pieces and, oh, you know, the prices at the thrift stores are so high. It's so high. I can't get a bargain at a thrift store. Are you one of these complainers? Do you know where the good platform to resell this is? Here's something I found shopping at Goodwill, at the Goodwill thrift store. If you're one of these people who thinks everything in a thrift store is overpriced, that everybody, that you can't get a bargain, that particular piece was five bucks. Yep, that was $5. And where is a good place to sell it? Etsy would be a good place to sell it. And you're not going to sell it for $5 either. If you want, you would put in a, a search term like overpriced, right? Overpriced. And it the video will come up of where I'm talking about overpriced or underpriced, right? If you're looking for things that are underpriced, put in underpriced. The videos of these great bargains are going to come up. Easy. I'm making it easy, right? And then, did you recognize this? Is this a real or a fake bag? Well, it's a real, and it's a real bag that I found thrift store shopping near Atlanta. I left it there for you. You can see the logo on it. You can see those big C's, right? Um, search my channel for handbags. And I'll show you how to identify and authenticate those handbags. Which are the marks you should be looking for? What do you do with the search? You just put in the word handbag. And all that information is going to come up for you through my videos. All you got to do is watch. And now I'm making it even more fun because when you watch the videos, you can look at my tagged products, those products that I think are cool, that relate to the videos, that you could shop right there while you're watching. It's a lot of fun. So I hope this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for me. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. And thanks to all of you who supported our channel. I'll see you next time.